Hello and welcome to this deep dive presentation about two enhancements to intelligent evidence gathering in Quorum Social Program Management version 702. For each enhancement we discuss in this presentation, we'll start by discussing the as-is scenario, that is, the state of the software prior to version 702. We'll then move on to an overview of the solution or enhancement, including descriptions of the to-be scenario, in other words, the changes in version 702. We'll then present some of the technical details of the changes, and we'll finish by telling you where you can find more information about the updates. The first IEG enhancement we'll discuss is the new subtitle element. Suppose that a citizen is applying for benefits online. When they start filling out an application, there are often several sections, each of which can contain several pages. In this example, the citizen is in the About You section, and each page within that section may also be called About You. The citizen proceeds to enter information in other sections. The citizen then moves on to the next section, which is called Household. The heading on this page is called Household Details, and there may be several pages within this section with the same heading. The next section is called Extra Info, and the citizen adds data to a page called Extra Household Information. So, the citizen has already added information to three sections in this application form. In this example, there are several more sections for the citizen to address. In some cases, the citizen may be filling out more than one application online. It would be easy for a citizen to lose their place in a multi-section application where each section can contain multiple pages, especially if they are filling out more than one application at a time. If the citizen touches multiple sections and multiple pages in each section across two or more application forms, it's possible that they may forget which application they are in. To solve this problem, Curum will now facilitate the inclusion of a subtitle under a page heading in an IEG script. This simple solution will allow agencies to add further context to a page in an IEG script, which helps citizens and caseworkers through the application process. So, what does this look like? In this example, the agency has added the subtitle, Cash Assistance. This is displayed directly below the page title element. By including the name of the program that is being applied for, the agency provides a useful reminder to the user as they navigate through each page. There is less chance of the user getting confused as they work through a multi-page application form. Here are some of the technical details of the enhancement. The subtitle element is an optional element and its purpose is to display localized subtitle text directly below the title of a page. You can define a subtitle element within a question page element, a relationship page element, or a summary page element. The subtitle element has a mandatory ID attribute that is used as a key to reference a text property in the appropriate locale-specific properties file. The value of the ID attribute must be unique within the context in which it is used. For example, it must be unique within the page in which it is contained. For simplicity, script writers can add the text to use for the default locale directly into the script definition by adding a CData section as a child of the subtitle element. When you import the script, the IEG engine removes this text from the script and instead stores it in the appropriate properties file, using the ID of the message element as the key. The ID is used as the key with which to reference the text within the associated properties file. The subtitle element does not have child elements. The subtitle text is displayed in 16-point Arial bold by default on the internal and external application. The subtitle element can be added to the IEG XML script only, that is, it cannot be added in the IEG editor. For more information about the subtitle element, consult the IBM Knowledge Center in the section entitled Authoring Intelligent Evidence Gathering Scripts. Now we'll discuss the second IEG enhancement, 
which deals with IEG's behavior when faced with a loss of network connectivity. Prior to version 702, if an internet connection drops while a user is interacting with an IEG script, the application becomes unresponsive, which often causes a user to exit the process and start again. As a result, the user loses all of the previously entered data. In this example, the caseworker has populated the IEG script when their network connection is lost. During the loss of connection, the caseworker can click Exit, Save an Exit, or Next, in other words, any action that triggers a server call. However, the action is not actually performed, which is confusing for the caseworker because there is no feedback. When the network connection is restored, the caseworker has an IEG script that is still filled out. However, the caseworker cannot save it, or press Next, or use any other page element that requires a server call. Even if the loss of network connection lasts only milliseconds, the form becomes unresponsive. The only option for the caseworker is to refresh the browser, because they cannot exit from the IEG script. The browser refresh causes all of the previously entered data to be lost, which is frustrating for the caseworker. This is confusing because there is no indication as to what happened to the application. In Curum version 702, a new feature is provided that informs the user about the loss of connection via a dialog box. When a user dismisses the dialog box, the form can still be used, and when the connection is re-established, the data can be saved as normal. Here's how the new feature works. During loss of network connectivity, when a user tries to navigate by using Next and Back buttons, or the Edit links, or other actions that require network connectivity, the new application logic catches the loss and displays an error message dialog to inform the user. When the user dismisses the modal dialog, navigation actions and links are reset and respond as before. During a network outage, the user is unlimited in the number of retries. During loss of connectivity, the user can continue to interact with form data as normal. Following re-establishment of network connectivity, assuming a session timeout has not occurred, the IEG script resumes seamlessly and works as normal with no data loss. All IEG actions and navigation will respond normally. In version 702, when a connection is lost, the user will see the Network Connection Error modal as soon as they try to continue adding data to the form. When the modal dialog displays, the page behind the modal is unresponsive. When the user acknowledges the modal by clicking OK, the application page is then back in focus. The user can then continue to enter information on that page. When they perform an action that requires a server call, such as clicking Next, the form is submitted if the network connection has been restored. If the network connection has not been restored, the modal is displayed again. The modal is in the center of the user viewpoint and follows the IEG UX and styling standards. This screenshot from version 702 displays the error message that users of the internal IEG application will see when network connectivity is lost. There are some subtle differences in the colors used, which ensures that the look and feel of the network connection error modal dialog harmonizes with other dialogs in the internal SPM application. From a technical standpoint, whenever a user performs an action that calls the server, the network connection error message displays. Actions that call the server include selecting buttons such as Next or Submit, and selecting links to delete and add entries. After dismissing the message, Users can edit data on the page. However, further actions that call the server result in the error message reappearing. When the connection is restored, the user can perform actions that call the server, which will be successful. Note that the user, not the system, detects that the network connection is restored. 
In addition, user actions that attempt to call the server are not buffered while the system is offline. The user will see a timeout warning message if this feature is configured. If the session times out, after 30 minutes, the data is lost. The loss of connectivity feature is provided for the internal and external IEG player. The feature is turned on by default, and it is not configurable. The text in the message dialog can be customized and localized. Three properties, which are displayed here, can be defined in the default property file iegconfig.properties for the IEG player and script. In the IBM Knowledge Center, this feature is described in the subsection entitled Loss of Network Connectivity During an IEG Session, which you can find in the section entitled Working with Intelligent Evidence Gathering. This is IBM's standard legal disclaimer. And this concludes the presentation about two enhancements to intelligent evidence gathering in Quorum Social Program Management version 702. Thank you for watching.